We've all heard the Ben Franklin quote, in this world, nothing is certain except for death and taxes. Us baseball fans, specifically in orange brimmed hats like myself, would probably enjoy seeing it updated to, nothing is certain except for death, taxes, and Eddie Murray. The aptly nicknamed Steady Eddie, a model of consistency, surprisingly never recorded 200 base hits or 35 home runs in a single season, yet he's one of only three players in history to compile 3,000 and 500 of those, respectively. Eddie never won MVP. Eddie never even led any one offensive category for a whole season outside of the strike-shortened 1981 season, which was situated within the prime of his career. Speaking of, the insane prime guy himself, my buddy Cam23, stops by later in this video. Quite simply, Eddie Murray just showed up to the ballpark, fielded first base, and hit the ball, often for power. There was nothing flashy about his game. Hell, he didn't even speak to the media. He let his game on the field do the talking, and it spoke loud enough to resolve that he was a first ballot Hall of Famer. Eddie Murray was born in Watts, East Los Angeles on February 24, 1956. He was the eighth of 12 kids. He's often mentioned that it's never been hard for him to find a pickup baseball game. His parents were originally from Cary, Mississippi. You could say that baseball was in Eddie's blood, as all five of the boys in the family played professional baseball. Charles Jr. was a standout in the Astros organization. He played for six years, rising as high as double A. His brothers Ollie, Venice, and Rich all played in the Giants organization. Both Ollie and Venice would see their careers derailed by injury early on. Rich, who was also a first baseman in the pros, played in 57 major league games for San Francisco across two seasons. Proud of finding this game you see here, shout out to the channel Classic SF Giants. This game took place the night Muhammad Ali lost in a 10th round stoppage to Larry Holmes, a match that was highly criticized based on Ali's lack of ability to defend himself. It's talked about on this telecast. A cool time capsule here. Also mentioned about Rich Murray during this game, Willie McCovey had proclaimed that Rich was the Giants superstar first baseman of the future, and his rise through the ranks had greatly influenced McCovey's decision to retire from baseball. But Rich, as with so many others, struggled mightily with major league pitching. Eddie Murray has been described as a natural with the bat, and unlike nearly every other elite hitter, Eddie was in and out of organized baseball as a kid. In fact, he only played his senior season of high school ball for Lock High. He was a star pitcher. The other half of the battery was his little brother, Rich. Ozzie Smith was the team's shortstop. Does anyone know of a high school roster with more star power in history? Let me know in the comments. Eddie batted 500 that season for the Marine League champs. Eddie Murray was selected by the Baltimore Orioles in the third round of the 1973 draft, a draft that also saw them pick up Mike Flanagan. Eddie started his professional career at Bowen Field in Bluefield. He was voted Appalachian League MVP with a 283 average, 11 homers, and 32 RBIs. He was promoted to the Miami Orioles of the Florida State League, where he'd lead the league in several offensive categories. He picked up switch hitting in AA, which would become a staple of his career. In 1976, he split the season between AA and AAA, with prolific hitting in both. He was projected to begin the season in Rochester out of spring training in 77, but he broke camp with the big team instead, beginning a full rookie season. Earl Weaver was extremely high on Murray and insisted he was ready. Despite being without a position with Lee May occupying first base, Murray got plenty of time in the DH role, ultimately playing in 160 games, and he was named American League Rookie of the Year with a 283 average, 27 home runs, and 88 RBIs. These are notably superior power numbers in comparison to National League Rookie of the Year, Andre Dawson. No slight to the Hawk, of course. Murray's offense gave the Orioles a big boost, as they stayed in pennant contention until September 30th. In 1978, Eddie replicated his power numbers from his remarkable rookie season. He made his first All-Star team and finished the year with 161 games played, 174 hits, 27 homers, and 95 RBIs, receiving an 8th place finish in AL MVP voting. In 1979, Eddie batted 295, drove in 99 runs, collected 179 hits, and even stole 10 bases, a career high that held throughout his career. Murray received MVP 
votes for the second straight year. In 79, Baltimore won 102 games, the third most victories of any Orioles team in franchise history. They claimed the AL East division crown and played the California Angels in the championship series. Eddie was outstanding, batting 417 with a home run, 5 RBIs, and 5 walks. The O's took 3 out of 4 games to punch their ticket to the World Series, marking their third appearance of the 1970s. Facing the Pittsburgh Pirates in the Fall Classic, Baltimore jumped out to a 3-1 series lead. Unfortunately, the Pirates shocked Birdland by winning three straight, with Willie Stargell's heroic efforts leading them to accomplish the seemingly insurmountable task. In September of 1980, Eddie was named Co-Player of the Month. He batted 342, hit eight homers, and drove in 30 runs. For the year, he posted a 300 average, hit 32 dingers, and drove in 116. He scored 100 runs, tallied a career-high 186 hits, and placed sixth in AL MVP voting. The durable Murray played in at least 158 games in each of his first four MLB seasons. Year in and year out, Eddie posted strong numbers. His consistency and reliability would earn him the nickname Steady Eddie. In 1981, the MLB player strike resulted in teams playing between 102 to 110 games during the regular season. The near two missing months of action cut a piece out of Murray's best season yet. In September, Eddie registered a 340 average, six homers, and 26 RBIs, securing another Co-Player of the Month award. In just 99 regular season games, Eddie tied for the AL lead with 22 homers and drove in an AL best 78 runs. He made his second All-Star team and received a 5th place finish in AL MVP voting. Eddie carried over his terrific 81 season into an outstanding April performance in 1982. In 18 games, he batted 441, drilled 5 long balls, and drove in 17 runs, notching his 3rd Player of the Month award. He would go on to make his third All-Star team and finish the year with a 316 average, 32 home runs, 110 RBIs, and a league-leading 18 intentional walks. Defensively, he was recognized with his first Gold Glove Award, and in AL MVP voting, he was the runner-up to Robin Yount. It was also during 1982 that Murray formed a lifelong friendship with the Rookie of the Year, Cal Ripken Jr. Eddie was a mentor to the future Iron Man, helping him to grow accustomed to the big leagues. In 1983, Eddie took his game to the next level. Murray was named to his fourth All-Star team. In the second half, he drilled 20 homers and drove in 63 runs, contributing to an Orioles squad that won 98 games and the AL East division. For the season, Eddie batted 306, matched a career-best 33 home runs, drove in 111, scored 115 runs, and collected 178 hits. His 6.7 war was a then-career high and ranked 7th in the American League. Their opponent in the ALCS, the Chicago White Sox, scored a combined three runs in the four-game series. After a Game 1 loss, Baltimore won three straight games and advanced to the World Series. In similar fashion, the O's dropped Game 1 and proceeded to win three straight, taking a 3-1 series lead. This time, they got the job done. In the decisive Game 5, Eddie belted two dingers and drove in three runs. Scott McGregor tossed a complete game shutout, securing the Orioles' third title in franchise history. As World Series winning teammates, Cal Ripken Jr. and Eddie Murray finished first and second in American League MVP voting respectively. While for a second straight year he was the runner-up, Eddie did not go home empty-handed. He was presented with his second gold glove and his first silver slugger. In May of 1984, Murray batted 385, hit six homers, and drove in 24 runs, winning Player of the Month honors for the fourth time. Eddie made his fifth All-Star team and finished the year leading the league in games played, walks, on-base percentage, OPS+, and intentional walks. Playing in all 162 games, Steady Eddie posted an identical 306 batting average in 1983 and 1984. His 110 RBIs in 84 were one shy of his 83 total. Talk about living up to your nickname. He won both the Gold Glove and Silver Slugger awards for the second straight season. Murray placed fourth in AL MVP voting. In 1985, after five appearances as a reserve, he was the starting first baseman and batted cleanup for his sixth All-Star game. On August 26th, in a 17-3 route of the Angels, Eddie had a game for the ages. He went 4-for-5, launching three homers and driving in nine runs. 
He finished the 85 season with career-high totals in RBIs and doubles, with 124 and 37 respectively. For the fifth year in a row, Murray placed in the top five of AL MVP voting. In September, Eddie and the O's agreed to a five-year, $13 million contract extension, making him the highest paid player in baseball at the time. In 1986, Murray made his sixth consecutive All-Star team. However, he was unable to participate in the Midsummer Classic due to a hamstring injury that sidelined him for nearly a month. The Orioles' fall from their 1983 championship run to being a 7th place team in 1986 instigated mid-season drama. In August, then-Orioles owner Edward Bennett Williams criticized Eddie for a perceived unmotivated attitude to hustle and give his best effort. On the flip side, Murray was disappointed with Williams' attempt at rebuilding the team. Eddie's relationship with the media soured, and the home fans were quick to rain down the booze at Memorial Stadium. Murray requested a trade, but finding the right suitor would take a few years' time. Eddie finished his 86 campaign with a 305 average, 17 homers, and 84 RBIs in 137 games. In 1987, Murray became the first switch hitter to homer from both sides of the plate in consecutive games on May 8th and 9th. Between 1987 and 1988, he averaged 29 homers and 88 RBIs. Despite the productive offensive output, it was viewed negatively due to Murray not reaching 100 RBIs in either season. Eddie's 277 average in 87 and 284 average in 88 were uncharacteristic. The 1988 Baltimore Orioles season, as many of you know, started with the legendarily bad 21-game losing streak. The season started with Cal Sr. at the managerial helm, who was replaced by Frank Robinson after going 0-6. The wins still didn't come. Eddie's chosen distance from the media seemingly began to be reflected in his relationship with the fans during a 54 and 107 season that was frustrating for all involved. A change was in order, and the Orioles dealt him back home to the Dodgers. From a familial standpoint, things had changed as his mother Carrie and sister Lucilla had passed away during his time in Baltimore. His first year with the Dodgers was a disappointment. He batted 247 with 20 home runs and 88 RBIs, but it played nicely into the 1990 season's storyline of rebirth, where he'd hit for a career-high 330. He grabbed a Silver Slugger award and finished fifth in MVP voting. He should have won, in my opinion. On September 4, 1991, Eddie did his best Kirk Gibson impression, limping to the plate in a pivotal moment for the Dodgers' pennant hopes. Despite a sprained ankle, he launched this homer to secure the victory they would eventually fall one game short of Atlanta. Following this season, he'd sign a two-year deal with the New York Mets. These two seasons were fairly forgettable from a team standpoint, but he did hit his 400th career home run on May 3, 1992. His next team, of course, stands out as one of the more memorable teams of that decade. He was a veteran on the young, exciting Cleveland Indians team who found themselves in contention for the first time in what felt like forever. He'd notch career hit number 3,000 in 1993. He'd go to the World Series with the Indians in 1995, and though the Braves bested the Indians, Eddie's postseason performance could be classified as, you guessed it, steady. Going into the 1996 season, Eddie had his sights set on joining Willie Mays and Hank Aaron with 500 home runs and 3,000 hits. 97 games into the season with the Indians, the recently deceased Orioles owner Peter Angelos, may he rest in peace, wanted to see Eddie reach this milestone in an Orioles uniform and dealt for him, which he did on September 6th. The Orioles would ride a wild card berth and face the Indians in the playoffs and defeat them before falling to the Yankees in the ALCS. He would return home to Southern California in 1997 for his age 41 season, suiting up 46 times for the Angels and a handful back with the Dodgers. For his career, Eddie batted 287, amassing 3,255 hits, 504 home runs, 1,917 RBIs, and 68.7 war. His 128 sacrifice flies is an MLB all-time career record. In 21 big league seasons, he was a Rookie of the Year, World Series champ, three-time Silver Slugger winner, three-time Gold Glove winner, and made eight All-Star teams. All-time, Eddie ranks 28th in home runs, 14th in hits, and 11th in RBIs. 
After retiring, Murray served in a variety of coaching roles, spending a few years as the Orioles bench coach and then as their first base coach. He was the Indians hitting instructor for several years, before briefly working in a similar role with the Dodgers. In 2003, Eddie was elected to the Hall of Fame, receiving 85.3% of the votes. Murray's legacy carries off the field, where he has earned multiple nominations for the Roberto Clemente Award. He donated $500,000 to an outdoor recreational campus located in Baltimore, Maryland. It was dedicated and named after Eddie's mother, Carrie Murray. He has also been involved with organizations such as the American Red Cross, Sickle Cell Disease Foundation, the United Way, and United Cerebral Palsy. Eddie Murray epitomized consistency, demonstrating MVP caliber numbers year after year. Steady Eddie and Cal Ripken Jr. were two pillars of an Orioles team that brought home their most recent World Series ring as of 2024. Looking back at the many legends to play this game, few have resonated within Baltimore quite like Eddie Murray.